Hello, and welcome to our video on the science of skin. Skin is part of the integumentary system and is the largest and primary protective organ of the human body. It covers the body's entire external surface and serves as a first-order physical barrier against the outer environment. The skin is also considered an endocrine organ, since it helps out with the production of vitamin D, which acts as a hormone. It also is a first line of defense for the immune system since it has many white blood cells such as macrophages and lymphocytes waiting in the layers of the epidermis and dermis. There are three layers to the skin. The epidermis, the outermost layer of the skin, provides a waterproof barrier and contributes to skin tone. The dermis, found beneath the epidermis, contains connective tissue, hair follicles, blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, and sweat glands. The dermis also has sebaceous oil glands, which are important and should be added to the slide. The dermis has specialized nerve endings not found in any other organ called Pacinian corpuscles, Meissner corpuscle, Merkel cells, and Ruffini's corpuscles. These help with sensing touch, vibration, pain, and temperature. The deeper subcutaneous tissue, hypodermis, is made of fat and connective tissue. It is melanocytes that produce melanin in the epidermis, which contributes to how dark skin is. The epidermis is further divided into five layers on thick skin like the palms and soles, stratum basal, stratum spinosum, stratum granulosum, stratum lucidum, and stratum corneum. Four layers in other places, lacking in stratum lucidum. A mnemonic to remember the layers of skin starting from the surface and going deeper is come, let's get sunburn. C is stratum corneum, L is stratum lucidum, G is stratum granulosum, S is stratum spinosum, and B is stratum basal. The epidermis is a stratified squamous epithelium that contains four to five layers depending on its location. Stratum basalis, basal cell layer. It is deepest and closest to the dermis. The stratum basal contains basal keratinocytes, immune cells such as Langerhans cells and T cells, and melanocytes that provide the skin with pigmentation. Keratinocytes from this layer evolve and mature as they travel outward or upward to create the remaining layers. Stratum spinosum, prickle cell layer. When exposed to UVB radiation, pre-vitamin D3 is synthesized primarily in keratinocytes of the stratum basal and stratum spinosum layers of the epidermis. This layer comprises most of the epidermis and contains several layers of cells connected by desmosomes, which are anchoring proteins that keep cells tightly bound to one another and resemble spines. Stratum granulosum, granular cell layer. This layer contains several layers of cells that contain lipid-rich granules. In this layer, cells begin to die and lose their nuclei as they move away from the nutrients located in the deeper tissue. Keratinocytes in the stratum granulosum contain cysteine and histidine-rich granules, which bind keratin filaments together. Stratum lucidum. This layer is only present in the thick layer of soles and palms and consists of mostly immortalized cells. It is a thin, clear layer of dead keratinocytes. Instead of keratin, Keratinocytes in the stratum lucidum contain elidin, a clear intracellular protein which gives this layer its transparent appearance. Stratum corneum, keratin layer. It is the outermost layer of the epidermis. This keratinized layer serves as a protective overcoat and due to keratinization and lipid content, this layer allows for the regulation of water loss by preventing internal fluid evaporation. The outermost layer also keeps out bacteria, fungi, parasites, and viruses. The dermis lies deep to the epidermis. It is a thick layer of connective tissue consisting of collagen and elastin, which contributes to skin's strength and flexibility respectively. It also contains nerve endings and adnexal structures such as hair shafts, sweat glands, and sebaceous glands. There are two layers of the dermis, the upper layer or papillary and the lower layer or reticular. The apical layer of dermis folds to form papillae that extend into the dermis like tiny finger-like projections and is referred to as the papillary dermis. It contains capillaries that facilitate the transport of nutrients. The lower layer of the dermis is referred to as the reticular dermis. It contains skin appendages such as hair follicles, sebaceous glands, and sweat glands. The presence of a dense concentration of collagenous and reticular fibers interwoven within this layer makes the reticular dermis significantly thicker than the papillary dermis. Both dermal layers contain fibroblasts, myofibroblasts, and immune cells such as macrophages, lymphocytes, and mast cells. Fibroblasts synthesize an extracellular matrix comprising of collagen, proteoglycans, and elastic fibers that provide the structural integrity of the dermis. The hypodermis is the third and deepest layer, consisting mainly of adipose tissue. 
skin adipose tissue stores energy in the form of fatty acids and functions as an endocrine organ important for glucose, homeostasis, and lipid metabolism. The adipose tissue also absorbs kinetic energy as well to act as a cushion during blunt trauma. This layer consists of fibrocytes and adipocytes and is rich in proteoglycans and glycosaminoglycans, which confer mucus-like properties to the layer. This layer also produces a variety of mediators such as growth factors, adipokines, and cytokines, and contains multiple immune cells. Subcutaneous fat serves as an insulating layer for the body, as fat is a poor conductor of heat. Now let's look at the physiological factors related to the skin. It varies based on its location, age, gender, medications, and health affecting the skin's density and thickness. As explained above, the varying thickness is due to changes in the dermis and epidermis. The palms and soles have a thick skin where there is marked keratinization, and the stratum lucidum layer and thinner skin is found on eyelids, axillae, and genitals, as well as the mucosal surfaces exposed to the external environment such as oral mucosa, vaginal canal, and other selected internal body surfaces. The skin thins during the fifth decade of life, primarily due to changes in the dermis with loss of epithelial appendages, elastic fibers, and ground substance, among others. Genetics also influence natural skin contour. For example, people of African-American descent typically exhibit thicker and darker skin compared to people of Anglo-Saxon ancestry. Nutritional status also affects the physical characteristics of skin. The skin is innervated by sensory nerves expressing receptors that can sense pain, nociceptors, itch, pureceptors, temperature, thermoreceptors, and touch, low threshold mechanoreceptors. These receptors are present as nerve-free endings. Nociceptive nerves are in close contact with hair follicles and epithelial cells with their free nerve endings terminating at various levels of the epidermis. Merkel cells are involved in mechanosensation, light touch, these are oval-shaped cells interspersed in the basal layer of the epidermis and innervated with sensory fibers. Meisner's corpuscles are located in the papillary dermis and are sensitive to touch. Pacinian corpuscles are located in the reticular dermis and are responsive to pressure and vibration. Both types of corpuscles are supplied by AA and AB sensory nerve fibers that are situated in the sensory ganglia. Thermoreceptors, critical for sensing thermal differences between the skin and the external environment, are expressed on both heat and cold-sensitive nerves, with the skin being more densely populated by cold-sensitive nerves. Activation of thermally sensitive nerves to either heat or cold results in vasodilation, vasoconstriction, sweating, or shivering. The skin is highly vascularized and is supplied by plexuses found between the reticular and papillary layers of the dermis. The blood supply originates from an extensive network of large blood vessels and capillaries that extend from regional branches of the systemic circulation to local sites throughout subcutaneous tissue and dermis, respectively. There is an extensive lymphatic framework that runs alongside many of the skin's blood vessels, particularly those attached to the venous end of the capillary networks. The lymphatic vessels are part of the immune system and help white blood cells move around the body so they can find pathogens. Erector pili muscles are the smallest, smooth muscles of the body that are found in all areas of the skin that contain hair follicles. These muscles control the positioning of hairs and the activity of sebaceous glands in response to environmental induction, such as heat and abrasion. The erector pili muscles contract and raise the hairs under conditions of stress when the sympathetic nervous system is activated, such as during the fight or flight response. The skin has many functions, and they are protection, protects against microorganisms, dehydration, ultraviolet light, and mechanical damage. Skin is the first barrier that the human body has against the external environment. Sensation, pain, temperature, touch, and deep pressure. Mobility, allows smooth movement of the body. Endocrine activity, skin initiates the biochemical processes involved in vitamin D production, which is essential for calcium absorption and normal bone metabolism. Exocrine activity, by the release of water, urea, and ammonia, skin secretes products like sebum, oil, sweat, and pheromones, and also exerts important immunological functions by the secretions of bioactive substances such as cytokines. Immunity. Physically keeps out pathogens and has white blood cells below the surface ready to attack. Temperature regulation. Skin participates in thermal regulation by the conservation or release of heat and helps to maintain the body's water and homeostatic balance.
Temperature regulation in skin occurs from blood vessels either constricting or dilating because blood is warm. So more equals warmer, dilation, and less equals colder, constriction. Also why skin looks red when hot and pale when cold. Sweat also helps cool the body. The melanin molecule plays a role in skin pigmentation. It offers photoprotection to the organism by absorbing the sun's ultraviolet radiation. The melanic pigments determine the color of the skin, hair, and eyes. White color, lack of melanic pigment. Black color, increased melanin density. Skin with less melanin is more likely to sunburn and get skin cancer. Skin with more melanin is more likely to have vitamin D deficiency since they have to spend more time exposed to UVB radiation for adequate vitamin D production compared to skin with less melanin. Research shows that the skin with the higher quantity of pheomelanin has a cancer risk following the exposure of the sun ultraviolet radiation, as higher quantity of reactive species of oxygen are produced, leading to a cellular lesion and initiating the carcinogen process. Your skin has a basal layer, and in that layer, there are the melanocytes. The melanocytes have melanin that is stored in a sac like melanosome. This absorbs harmful UV rays. The type, amount, and density of the melanin deposition determines the color of the skin. Why do we have a variety of skin colors? The UV rays from the sun can cause DNA damage in the skin cells. The melanocytes then transfer the melanin to the keratinocytes to protect the cells from UV rays. The transferred melanin arrange themselves above the nucleus of the cell to protect from DNA damage. The differences in the type, concentration, size, and distribution of the melanin, which is also a genetic trait, will create a wide variety of skin color. The wound healing process consists of four phases, hemostasis, inflammation, proliferation, and remodeling. Disruptions in any of the phases of wound healing result in impaired healing. A prolonged inflammatory phase may result in chronic wounds and inefficient wound healing. Perturbed proliferative and remodeling phases may lead to irregular wound closure, fibrosis, and scarring. People can also produce varying amounts of the different types of collagen used during proliferation and remodeling, resulting in keloid scars or bad-looking scars from minor wounds. The way a person's scars look is genetic. Skin protects the host from invasion by employing physical barriers, biomolecules, immune and non-immune cell intricate network, and skin structures. Corneocytes in the stratum corneum contribute to the barrier function of the epidermis. These cells are arranged in bricks and mortar fashion, interspersed by lipids such as ceramides, cholesterol, and free fatty acids. Disruptions in the expression or function of these components may cause improper barrier formation or skin disorders or inflammatory conditions in the skin. Autoimmune disease like psoriasis increase inflammation, causing breaks and lesions in the skin, leading to an impaired physical barrier. Skin pH is acidic and ranges between 4 to 6. The body's blood environment maintains a near-neutral pH, 7.4. The skin pH is more acidic than internal pH. It is slightly acidic to keep water in and bacteria out. If it is too alkaline, skin is going to look flaky and red. If it's too acidic, it increases the likelihood of inflammatory skin conditions, such as acne and eczema. Recent research suggests skin pH depends on several key enzymes involved in the synthesis and maintenance of a competent skin barrier. Age, anatomic site, sebum, sweat, genetic predisposition affect the pH along with the use of creams, soaps, and cosmetics. Skin makes an exclusive interface between the environment and the host body. It receives and generates signals related to timing from the light. Skin cells have peripheral clocks. There is a growing body of research in circadian and ultradian, an oscillation that repeats multiple times during a 24 hours period, cutaneous rhythms, including clock mechanisms, functional manifestations, and stimuli that entrain or disrupt the normal cycle. It has therapeutic and clinical implications of circadian rhythm in skin health and disease. The skin is a complex organ and is in constant contact with the environment. It functions to protect the host from the environment and infections, aid in vitamin D synthesis, elicit immune responses, and provide tissue repair. Thank you for watching and have a great day.